All praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakah HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles of GMS, those who rule well. Salutations to the sincere Akim out there laboring in his truth and sincerity across the four winds. Shalom, and may the Holy Spirit dwell upon you, Akim. All right. Also, the Akwaf out there, okay, and those who are supporting those who are on the highways and byways that are, that are risking their lives for this truth's sake. I'm Yalak Marar from the Shepherd of Berea camp, and salutations to the fellow Akim and Shepherd of Berea. Looking into a high holy day that we're in, which is the blowing, the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets, excuse me, memorial of the blowing of the, of the trumpets, okay, which is written in Numbers the 10th chapter, and in uh, Leviticus, it is uh, on the new moon, okay, which is the seventh new moon, okay, according to the lunar calendar, not uh, the uh, monthly calendar, the Roman calendar, or the calendar that we have in, in America, okay, so just looking at this, uh, not make this too long. Just it's going to be short. Numbers ten and one, and the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, "Make thee two trumpets of silver." And this is these trumpets will be used. Or oh, explain it. It says, "Of a piece shalt thou make them, that thou may mayest use them for calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps." Now we we are out there on the highways and byways for the Most High sent us to bid them to the marriage. Okay, so we're ultimately doing the same thing, and we're taking a journey. Okay, with this gospel, you know, your feet shot in the, this gospel because we're actually going on a journey. You know, it say um, also a Micah two and one arise and depart. We're going on a journey, okay, and um, not physically, but we will physically leave here, okay, when the angels come and blow that same trumpet. But I wanted to look at that silver, okay. Now looking into silver trumpets, all right. Um, we know silver is. A metal that is used as healing okay it has silver has a lot of colloidal silver has a lot of healing properties all right and it also give off a certain shine but also for the trumpet I just uh, looked this up I didn't really know about this until researching it the coating also affects the timber it says um, you know I was just looking at a uh, uh, um, this is a uh, choosing on the basis of material and the coating Okay, basically silver versus a brass, all right, or of gold. Now, I'm not gonna uh, read all of this. I just want to go into the properties. Essentially, the liqueur coating or plating applied to the surface of the body of an instrument is intended to protect it from rust and dirt. However, coating and plating will also subtly affect the timbre of the instrument. Now, I want to look up this word timbre because to me, I believe it's the sound. Yes, the, the character or quality of a musical sound. So the coating will affect the sound. So the Lord said to make it with silver. All right, now, when it's a gold, it's a sharp, powerful sound. When it's clear, it's solid, but it's mellow. Strong sounds are produced clearly. Gold plate, it says gentle, yet compar comparatively noticeable sound, more mellow than sound produced with silver plate. But silver plate is gentle, cheerful sound all right you know none of them say so it's a when we are is to uplift some that's cheerful is to uplift all right when we say kwam yasha Allah, you were trying to uplift our people okay and giving them what joy all right we're actually giving them the joy that we won't be here we won't be niggas all our lives man we won't just be here nobodies you will be cool finally <laughs> and not just say you you know your nation We'll have an actual purpose here. You don't really have a purpose here. You know, you work, you come back, you know, you do what you do. But there is no essence of purpose in your life. Aside prophesying, I'm saying, I'm not talking about in the truth, I'm talking about outside of it. You know, it's you can't really even be a man here. Right. You know, you know, according to the scriptures, you know, it, it, you know, you're it, it's tough. It's tough. So that silver is to give a cheerful sound to lift up the continents of our people. In ourselves, a cheerful sound characteristics of the instruments are expressed directly, producing finer nu nuances. All right, so the sounds is gentle, is cheerful, and is a finer uh, nuance expression. All right, it's a distinction. So when we are out there, they could distinctly know. Oh, those are the Hebrew Israelites versus if it was a Christian out there. Just actually think about that. We're all preaching out the Bible, but you can tell 
when it's a brothers from the Hebrew Israelites out there versus a Christian pastor out there versus um um you know regular people who may go out and uh uh like you know they might not be Christian but they might be uh they might just be one of the people who's just reading out the Bible. All right. So well you could I guess you could put it along the line of Christian, you know. So you actually are able to think about that. You actually able to cipher between the differences of sounds, and you would know, oh, those is Israelite, oh, those is that, just off the sound alone. And I find that powerful because the Lord wanted it played it a certain way, and because the way that is played it will give it actually gives off a sound. These these are this is a um what do you call it? This is a musical instrument guide. This is from Yamaha. So you know, like I didn't I wouldn't know about it, but just l looking at it and researching hmm, why silver. You know, actually has, um, you know, look, they have, they go into breakdowns of this, and I never really played instruments before. I, I do have a, 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 a actual uh, Rams Rams horn. All right, I mean, it's not made out of silver, but you know, a person who's into music would actually know the, you know, they would really notice. All right, so you know, Lord's will. This is edifying. Um, the purpose of it, Joel two and one. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, okay, throughout Israel, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. The alarm was for you to move, all right? So where are we? We are supposed to be moving, not settling here. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, all right? For the day of the Lord coming for it is nigh at hand. We see that through the prophecies, all right? Bombs being dropped in Israel, Beirut. We're seeing it, uh, the pestilences, earthquakes, California's on fire, the uproars of the people, the mark of the beast microchip is at hand. Literally, and these are the prophecies where the Most High will come. All right, we have had blood moons, okay, consistently, solar eclipse, and the Holy Spirit is now being poured upon the people. So this is, the people are having dreams, visions, all right? So this is ultimately, all right, what, what's going on and that blowing has been being done, starting from the apostles on down. A day of darkness, a day of, and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, the great people and the strong people, they have not been ever the light. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the generations of years to come. All right. So that's the day of the Lord returning. All right. So that trumpet will be blown as well for the angels. Now, let's get that. Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall the sign of the son of man in the heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds, okay? We said dark clouds, all right? They're going to block out the sun. Those are the chariots of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, all right? They're going to let off a distinct town. And they shall gather together his elect. You see, isn't it for, as Numbers, the 10th chapter, all right, have um read that this is for, okay, <clears throat> may is used for calling of an assembly. It's meant to gather, all right? And it's uh, to gather the heads. And it's funny, like, that's how it's being done because the Lord is going to gather the, the, uh, the, what, the, the, those who, uh, those who, uh, raised, who died in the truth, they're going to be called for first. You know, think about how powerful that is going into the blowing of the trumpets. Individuals will actually come for first. It's lucky. Um, Call this brother right back. Salakia. Hold on, real. Salakia. Back, Salakia. So it says, um, yeah, uh, Salakia. That was a brother calling, brother going to going build. But real quick, when you blow an alarm the second time, not the alarm, Salakia, uh, verse 3. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly themselves to thee at the door of the congregation, if they blow but one trumpet, then the princes. So just think about that. You know, the, the dead arising first. I'm not saying that that's is good. The, the one trumpet is don't, don't. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just thinking about things spiritually, how the angels going to blow a trumpet. But the scriptures do say that the dead is going to rise. Who died in this truth is going to rise first. So we can agree to that. Right. And then we shall be caught up. That's in Second Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. I'm just thinking about how that trumpet worked down here and how when they blow it, like it'll work in a certain order down here. OK, I'm not saying this is going to be one trumpet sound and the second one. That's not what I'm saying, because I, I don't know. 
But I'm just using the spiritual eye, you know, through the spirit and power, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you know, to look, to look at it a certain way. All right. If thou blow but one trumpet, then the princes which are, which are heads of the thousands of Israel shall gather themselves unto thee, you know. And then when ye blow alarm, the east part shall go forward, which I think was with Judah. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the east camp, but it was certain three tribes amongst, I think, Judah, Manasseh and another tribe. And then the south camp was another three tribes. And so the, it was sort of order of how, how it was moving. But um, more or less, I just want to go back to this. Um, verse 31, they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. All right. And then starting with the, uh, those who died in the truth first shall be on there and then we shall be caught up with them. All right. So this is the purpose of this, uh, blowing of the trumpets, man. And just looking at how that silver is getting off a distinct sound. And when we're prophesying out there, you can tell when you are around a brother who's in a heap, who is, who's, who's speaking. All right. All right. In a, in a true doctrine. All right. Of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, as a Hebrew Israelite, they have off, they give off a distinct sound. All right, even within the difference of actual camps, you know, those who follow the apostles and those who uh who uh go out of IUIC, because the sound that IUIC give off will be a different sound, you know, as far as the name. You have sincere brothers that's gonna, you know, call on the name of the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but you know, certain individuals they they aren't, you know, and a lot of them may be sincere though. But um Again, and then even from being in the Israelite camp to just being a person who's in the Bible, how you give off that sound, most people come up soft-spoken. Then you have some people who, who do cry out loud, but they don't have the sound of, you know, it's a distinct sound going to that trumpet. So, you know, Lord's will, this was edifying. With that being said, to the next time, Shalom and uh, um, Ashar uh, uh, blowing of the trumpets. Uh, I know Shapar. Kapar, Shapar is the trumpet, but I forget the uh, uh, blowing um, uh, Hebrew word, but, but that's Shalom, Shalom.